this is Kishan and this video is to understand how to commit in a trigger. So before that let's understand what is a trigger. A trigger is a stored PLSQL block. It can be either a PLSQL procedure, a C or a Java procedure that is associated with the table, view, schema or the database itself. Oracle database automatically executes a trigger when a specific event takes place. That event is known as triggering event which may be in a form of a system or a DML statement. DML statement being insert, update or delete or system ev events meaning like uh, uh, after log on, before log off, something like that. We have two types of triggers basically, DML triggers and system triggers which can be more drilled down to either row level triggers or statement level triggers. Row level triggers would be executed for each and every row that is affected by the triggering event and a statement level trigger would be effect, uh, executed only once for each triggering event. Yeah, so how can, uh, can we commit in a trigger? So if you have a commit or rollback in a trigger, it will not give any compilation error. But as soon as the, it gets the triggering event and the trigger is fired, you will get an SQL ORS 04029. That is cannot commit in a trigger error. It would be a runtime exception that you will, uh, you will be getting. Now as we can see, the cause for the trigger as Oracle says is a trigger attempted to commit or rollback. And the action would be rewrite the trigger so it does not commit or rollback. But what if it's a requirement to you know commit inside a trigger or you are calling a procedure or a function from the trigger and that procedure or function has a commit or rollback in it. When such a scenario comes, what you need to use is pragma autonomous transaction. Just declare the trigger as pragma autonomous transaction and now you can commit or rollback the trigger or you can even call a procedure or a function which has a commit or rollback in it. So once you have defined this trigger as a pragma autonomous transaction, it would allow all of these. But now you have a new responsibility of committing that trigger or rollbacking the trigger on the own. Like now the triggering event would, whatever happens with the triggering event, whether it is committed or rollback, that will not affect the trigger statements. Like if you are doing 10 things in the trigger, uh, you have to manually commit them or roll back them as your requirement. But that would lead to some confusion. I would just show you what it is and what do we understand through all this through a small example. So yeah, over here, let me create a table called as employee log update. That means whenever, uh, what I want to show you is whenever there is an update in the salary of the employee, you know, whenever the salary of an employee is changed in the employee table, whenever the column salary is changed in the employee table, I want to log it. I want the employee ID, I want the previous salary, the new salary, the, the date on which the update is done and the user who updated this. So I've created this table to store this detail. Now I'm creating a trigger called as tree, rec uh, tree record update, which is an after trigger of salary on employees. That means it would be only executed if there is an update update of salary on the employees table it's a for each row trigger that means that whatever number of rows are affected all of them the trigger would be fired for all of them so what i'm doing in the trigger is i'm just logging this into this log update ta table i'm taking the employee id i'm taking the old salary the new salary the sys date and the user so let me just create this trigger on this table so whenever there is an update of salary of this employee stable, this trigger would be executed. Now what I want to do is, I'm, I'm going to target these two. As you can see, there are two employees with uh, department ID 20, that is 201 and 202. The salary is currently 14,000 and 7,000. I just noted down it over here for our reference. Now what I'm doing is, I'm executing an update statement that would update both of this uh, rows. I'm just incrementing the salary by 1,000. So 14,000 would be 15,000 and 7,000 would be 8,000. As it is a row level trigger for this trigger, event, it will be fired twice. So as soon as I do an update, as we can see, it says two rows are updated. And now I can check, like select staff from employees. See, as I told you, 14 is changed to 15 for 201 and 7000 is changed to 8000 for employee 202. Now when I check this employee log table, I have the information over here, 201, the previous salary was 14,000, it is updated to 15,000 on 19, 9, 2016 by the user with char. Similarly, 202 is updated from 7,000 to 8,000 on 19, 9, 2016 by user with char. So this is it, you have created a trigger which is logging the information, everything is fine. Now what if you want to add a commit in that, uh, uh, that trigger? Now just see this, when I do a rollback, when I do a rollback to the update statement, what happens is, 
now when I see the employees table, the update statement is rolled back. Uh, for 201 I have salary of 14,000, for 202 I have salary of 7,000. When I check the employee log update table, there is no data. Why? Because it has updated. The insert has been rolled back because I have done a rollback over here. So the update statement is rolled back. And even the trigger st uh, the statement in the trigger to insert in this table is rolled back. Now say suppose when I put a commit over here, the, when I do a commit over here as I, as I told earlier in this video that a commit will not give a compilation error. See it says trigger has been compiled. There is no error. Now when I do an update, the same update just again, what I get is that error 04092 cannot commit in a trigger. A trigger attempts to commit or roll back, rewrite the trigger so that it is not commit to rollback. So as you saw, when I update, I executed the update statement, when the triggering event took place, at that time we got the error. The compilation was fine with the commit. Yeah, so to solve this, as I told you, you need to make it pragma autonomous. So you have to write it pragma autonomous pragma autonomous transaction and here it is it is always a good habit to declare all the pragmas after the variable declaration I just compiled it as it shows over here the trigger is now compiled so the trigger is pragma autonomous transaction it has a commit over there let me just show you the employees table 201 the salary is 14,000 over here sorry 201 14,000 202 7,000 now when I do an update of this when I do an update employee set salary 1000 it updates see the no more error even when the trigger has a commit it doesn't give an error because it's a pragmatic transaction so let us see the new update over here 201 15,000 it is updated 202 is updated to 8,000 when we check the log table we have the previous salary 14, new salary 15, previous salary 7, new salary 8, it is all fine. But the problem is over here, when you do a rollback, what happens is rollback is completed and it, in the employees table you have your old details like without the update, you have 201 is 14,000 and 202 is 17,000. These are the previous salary amount which was before this update, before I incremented it to 1000. But when you check the log table, you still have the record over there. The log table says 201 is incremented to 15,000 and 202 is incremented to 8,000. What happened was when the triggering, when you updated this, triggering event took place and the trigger was called. And because the trigger is in pragma autonomous uh, transaction and there is a commit, what it did is it committed the statements inside the trigger. That meaning it committed this insert statement. Now when you have rolled back the original transaction, that is original update, when you have rolled back this, the triggering, the statement inside the triggers are not rolled back. They are committed by the trigger itself. So what happens is, your original transaction of update got rolled back, but the log is now still there. You still have information in the log table. So it might lead to such confusions if you are using a commit or a rollback in a trigger. So always be really careful when doing so. Now let me show you one more interesting thing. Let me just truncate this table, lock table. What I'm doing is I'm removing these two locks from here so that I I truncated the table. There's nothing more in the lock table. The employees table is as it was before. Any update two zero one fourteen thousand two zero two seven thousand. As I have written it over here for reference. Now what I want to show is. If, if I declare the uh, trigger as a pragma autonomous transaction and if I don't put a commit or a rollback or anything over here, let me just compile this. It says the trigger is compiled. Yeah, so the trigger is now compiled and now I'm doing an update statement. I'm giving it a triggering event. What happened is, it says active autonomous transaction detected and rolled back. What before returning from an autonomous PLSQL block, all autonomous transaction started with the block must be completed. If not, the active autonomous transaction is implicitly rolled back and the error is raised. Ensure that before returning from the autonomous PLSQL block, and any active autonomous transaction is explicitly committed. So what it says is, you are saying it is an autonomous transaction, but you are not rolling, you have not done any rollback or commit in this trigger. So what to do of this transaction? It's a pragma autonomous. You need to either say whether to commit it or not. So what it did is, 
even the employees record is rolled back even this update of 1000 didn't happen it is still as before it raised an error it is now telling us that you know either you commit or roll back the trigger so that is also a part which you need to consider if you are declaring your trigger as pragmatic means transaction you need to, you need to commit or roll back explicitly over there even if you have an exception block then also you need to write over here whether you want to roll back or whether you want to commit anything like that so you need to commit or roll back the autonomous transaction that is one thing which you need to keep in mind while using it so this is the video about using pragma autonomous transaction and committing inside a trigger uh, thank you for watching this video please do let me know what you know what you think about the video in the comments please do like share and subscribe thank you